Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video and welcome to my read-along vlog for The Watchmaker of Filigree Street. So it is the 14th of February and I have just started rereading The Watchmaker of Filigree Street. Um, I have read two chapters of it today, I'm listening to it on audiobook and I just, oh, I'm loving it so much. I had forgotten how much I love this book. I mean, I hadn't, I knew that I loved it very, very much, but I had kind of like just forgotten all the little details. Um, and listening to it on audiobook is such a joy as well. I always like rereading things on audiobook. Um, like I'd forgotten that like the very opening of the book is like Thaniel making tea, um, which I just really, really enjoyed. I really like Thaniel as a character. Um, all the stuff about like music and, and colour, I, I really like as well. Those kind of little details which hadn't stuck in my head so much. I'd forgotten as well that like actually I feel like it's quite a few chapters before we meet Kate Amori and I just can't wait to meet him again. So I'm just thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying rereading The Watchmaker of Filigree Street so far and I will check in again soon. So I've just finished chapter five of The Watchmaker of Filigree Street, which I am loving so much again. It's so nice to reread this one and spot all the like little things I didn't notice the first time. Um, I should say, if I haven't said already, this video is going to be full of spoilers um, because I want to talk about all of the spoilery things to do with this book. So if you haven't read this yet, please don't be watching this video. Anyway, I'm up to chapter five, as I said, um, as we've met Kate Mori now, which is wonderful. Um, I love him so much as a character, so it's really nice to meet him again. And there's so many like little things hinting at all of the secrets, which I didn't notice. Like, I actually feel like now knowing about Samuel and Mori's relationship later, like actually I can see lots of chemistry between them like right away. Um, there's the bit where like Samuel is like dressing in his kitchen and like watching him while he's turned away. And then there's that bit in the tea shop where um, Thaniel thinks that Maury um, looks as though he's listening to multiple conversations at once, even though hardly anyone's speaking, and of course he is, because he's like seeing all the features. And I also really like the bit like just after the explosion when Thaniel thinks that he can like just imagine what would happen if he had stayed in the pub and how he would have died, because of course that is like the possible future that Maury has saved him from and he can kind of see it too, and I just, oh, I just love it, the way that this book looks at memory. Um, and the way it looks at loneliness, like I really love the little moment where Maury like admits to being lonely and Daniel like wants to say he's lonely too but can't bring himself to, I just are. Oh, it's so lovely, I love it so much. It's so good, um, and I love Katsu, I'd forgotten like how fun Katsu is. It was really nice as well to read the, the Grace chapter because as I think I said in my video, I feel like the Daniel and Maury plotline has stayed much more in my head than Grace's story. Um, but Grace is a really interesting character, especially because I don't like her that much, but I also sort of think she's a wonderful character, even when I find her like a little bit frustrating. Um, but I also find her really interesting. And like, I really liked the scene where she's in the library and she's kind of snuck in. I'd forgotten about that. Um, but then also like the disdain she has for all the women in the like women's suffrage group. Like, I feel like she is very judgmental as a character, but I feel like that's kind of an important part of her personality that's quite interesting to look at. So yeah, oh, I'm just loving it so much. Looking forward to reading on and I will check in again soon. So I've just finished listening to chapter 14 of The Watchmaker Fergus Street, so making good progress and I just, oh, I love it so much. So much has happened. Um, the last couple of chapters were very eventful. So Grace and Daniel finally met, which um, is really nice. It's a really nice moment to like connect those two stories. Um, and also Daniel has just found out about Maury's like um, future seeing, but he isn't really sure whether or not to believe it. Um, but Maury has finally told him um, because when Maury has a cold and he's not like feeling very well, then he stops being able to like, keep it a secret. I suppose he stops being able to like tell um, reality and like his future potential memory seeing um, apart um, and so he starts like acting weirdly and saying things that, that Thaniel hasn't said to him yet and everything and so Thaniel kind of thinks that he's been following him and then Mori explains everything and I, and I really like it. Um, and yeah, well, I just I just love it so much. There's so much I love about it. It's really nice to reread it for a lot of reasons, um, partly because it's really nice to like spot all the little like um references to memory and like future um earlier in the book before you find out before you're fully aware of what Maury can do um like there's that moment where Grace is at Oxford kind of thinking about her future and like two different paths that she could go on and that's obviously like 
she's thinking about that but that's what Mori can like literally see all the time um I really like that there's also like all the little references to clockwork like there's a bit where Nathaniel and Grace meet and Nathaniel thinks that like um Grace's springs are wound too tight or something like that which I really enjoy it's also really nice to just like encounter all the characters again and also encounter all the characters that I feel like I'm slightly less familiar with like I feel like Nathaniel and Kate and Mori occupy like a good space in my imagination already um and, and Grace to a certain extent too like because I always had in my head that I liked Nathaniel's chapters better than Grace's which I think I probably do because I just love Nathaniel so much not that I don't like Grace as a character she is really interesting but I've forgotten how much I like Matsumoto um and how interesting a character he is I really enjoy um the audiobook as well for him like I feel like his um dialogue is done very very well he's such a fun character and also like all the certainly minor characters like Dolly Williamson um and Fanshaw I've forgotten how fun Fanshaw is like there's so many minor characters who are fantastic as well and I just yeah I'm just absolutely loving rereading it it's also really nice to read it like as a love story between Nathaniel and Kate Mori, like knowing what happens later on in the book, which obviously I didn't know when I was first reading it. And I didn't like pick up on like the little signs and the little like intricacies of their relationship. Like the very fact that Kate Mori is like in London living this life for Nathaniel, like on the possibility that he might meet and fall in love with Nathaniel. Like, I just, oh, I just really love it. It's so good, it's so good. I also really enjoy all like the civil service stuff. Um, I don't know why, but I find the Victorian civil service fascinating. Like I just find it really, really interesting. So it's really fun in this too, which is basically all to say that I'm loving rereading it very, very much. And I cannot wait to read on and get to stuff later on. It's also be really nice to see on the Goodreads group how many people are enjoying it as well. I feel like a lot of people are really, really enjoying it too um, and really finding it fun. Because that's the thing I really love about Natasha Pulley. It's not just that her books are brilliant and powerful and emotional. They're also just excellent fun. They're really, really entertaining, really, really enjoyable um, and just an utter delight to read. So yeah, right. I'll check in again soon. So I've just finished reading chapter 18, another wonderful chapter with so many like little fun things. Um, and the last few chapters have just been great. Lots of drama happening. Um, so I really enjoy the little cameo of Girl Ben Sullivan. It's so fun. And I really like like all the little touching small things between um, Faniel and Mori. Like I really like the fact that Mori like weeks ago, um, like rigged the piano so that a key was bad in order to make Faniel meet um, Gilbert and Sullivan. Um, I forgot which one it is he meets um, in order to like set the whole thing up so that he can play the piano again. I just think that's like such a nice, little thing um and I like the moment where like um Nathaniel kind of realizes that Maury's done that and that like that's kind of a gesture of kindness from him I just really like that I also like the bit at the end of chapter 18 where um Nathaniel is looking at Maury's hand where he's been injured um, and he takes his hand and then Maury like pulls it away again and um Nathaniel's about to ask and then he sees that Maury knows he's about to ask and doesn't want him to ask um, and it's because obviously Maury is like in love with Nathaniel and Nathaniel doesn't realise it's so great I love it very very much and I just think there are so many like little moments like that which I don't think I really picked up on the first time I read it so it's really nice to like reread it and notice those things I also enjoy the like friendship between Grace and Nathaniel um and the complications of like Grace trying to work out whether or not um Maury is a real clairvoyant and then also the kind of like deal um, arrangement that her and Daniel make um, for her future so that she can be a scientist and have a house if she marries Daniel um, and it's just yeah it's so interesting it's so fun like all the little elements of it I really like the way it looks it's kind of like music um, and science and clockwork and all the different themes that it explores are just so great so I'm very very much enjoying reading it as you can tell and looking forward to reading on and getting closer to the end. So I've just finished um, chapter 25 of The Watchmaker at Fergus Street um, and loving it very much again. Oh, it's so good. So much has happened. We're really getting to like the climax of the novel. Grace and Daniel got married um, and Daniel left Grace on his wedding night to go and spend the night with Maury instead. And I love like all the tension between Grace and Daniel and Maury um, and Matsumoto as well. Like the kind of complicated feelings between them um, and the kind of messy marriage of convenience that Daniel and Grace are 
are kind of setting up but there are also like feelings involved and although Grace is like a little bit in love with Matsumoto she also um kind of feels possession over Nathaniel as well I guess and I really like like all of the very very complicated character relationships like I really enjoy how everything is very very complicated and nothing is straightforward um I like that very much um and so that has all happened and then Grace has gone missing and Mori has gone missing and we've had the um performance of the operetta it's really really nice to reread it because I feel like I remember the character relationships more than I remember like the individual elements of the plot so it's really nice to like get to the climax of the plot again with all the drama happening I'm just thoroughly thoroughly enjoying it it's such a fun and engaging and compelling read and I feel like all the characterization is so complicated and I love the way it looks at like memory um I think it's really 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 interesting um, and all the like clockwork details too I just love it very very much so I'm looking forward to reading through the last few chapters and um, getting to the end again it's just been such a delight to reread this one um, and yeah that's all for now I'll check in again soon. So I've just finished reading The Watchmaker at Fergus Street which I just absolutely loved rereading it's been such a joy to reread um, and especially to listen to an audiobook actually it's been really nice. I'm trying to think about all the things that I have to say about the ending. I love the ending very, very much. Um, I really love the relationship between Nathaniel and Maury throughout, um, but I also really like kind of Grace and Matsumoto um, and their ending. And I find Grace a really interesting character because I don't really like her. And in some ways, like, she is the antagonist of the book. Like, it's quite interesting. I feel like the point of it in some ways is for a lot of the book, you're not sure whether or not Maury is the antagonist and you're not really sure what to make of him. Um, and there's quite a long time where you don't really know whether to trust him. But I also feel like you like him as much as a character that you kind of do. Um, but I feel like because you see in Grace's head, you are supposed to like like her and think you trust her, but actually she kind of comes to be the antagonist in a way in the end and causes all this these complications um, towards the end of the novel, which I find really, really intriguing. And I also think it's interesting because kind of all the way through Maury doesn't like Grace and you don't really know whether that is to do with um, him being jealous of her and Daniel. But I also think it's because Kate and Maury kind of sort of remembers that Grace might be a danger to him, like an actual danger, um, but he doesn't really remember how and that's why he sort of um, doesn't like her from the beginning, I think. Um, because it's unlikely so he can't remember it well, but um, he sort of knows that she might be a danger. But I kind of like the fact that even though he doesn't really like her um, at the end of the novel, he still kind of helps her and Matt's motor out um, and he takes the bolt out the train somehow or gets someone to do it, I don't know. Um, but he has the bolt at the end, so he has obviously stopped Matsumoto's train and going on and brought him back to England to be with Grace, which I, I really like. I think that's kind of a nice moment of Maury like helping Grace out, but also is it to slightly get Grace away from Nathaniel? Who knows? I don't know. But I just, I really like all of the relationships because I feel like they're all complicated and nuanced. Um, and I feel like the subtlety with which they're done as well is really nice. Like. The moment when they're in um, the hospital and Nathaniel thinks Maury's older than me, by the time I'm in my 50s this will all be over, is I really like that moment because it's so beautiful in that it is one like a really sad thought to have but also the very fact that he thinks that thought means he thinks we're gonna be together until Maury's dead, like that's it, this is it now and I, I really like that like moment for how um, Natasha Pulley is kind of telling you that sentiment through something sad? I don't know, I just think it's really good. I just love it very, very much. It's been interesting reading this and I feel like, I don't know, I feel like rereading this I had less of the feeling that I usually have when I reread a favourite contemporary novel and much more the feeling I have when I like reread a Jane Austen or a Charles Dickens, um, which I think is partly because I listen to it on audiobook um, and I often reread classics on audiobook but I think it's also because I've read the sequel to this book and I've read like a short story set in this world and so I know these characters really well so I didn't just feel like intrigued and, and you know curious to reread it and see what I thought. I also just felt like so like warm and delighted to be back with these characters because I love them so much and I just felt like I don't know warm is the best word like the rereading this just made me feel so happy and so like I don't know, comforted. It felt like a real comfort read in the same way that going back to like Pride and Prejudice does, um, which is really lovely. And it's really nice to have the audiobook. The audiobook's really good. So I'm looking forward to like just listening to it again in the future. <laughs> now I know that I have it. Um, and yeah, it's just been such a joy to reread. And it's been really nice to see people enjoying it as well on the Goodreads group and then also kind of predicting what they think is going to happen and what they think the relationship between Daniel and Mori is. I found that really interesting to see. Um, Especially because, as I said, when I originally read it, I read it in like one day. So 
I didn't like stop and think about what was going to happen. I just like flew through it. Um, it's been quite nice to see like what people are thinking um, as they read. And it's just been, yeah, such a fun one to read. Um, one thing I wanted to say while I'm here, um, because assuming if you're watching it, you've read this book, um, I would like to do a read along also of the sequel to this book, which is The Lost Future of Pepper Harrow. This one here, The Lost Future of Pepper Harrow. I'd like to do a read along of this too. To be honest, I would like to do a read along of all Natasha Bully's books. So um, this one and also The Bedlam Stacks and The Kingdoms. Um, but I feel like I will do this first because it is a direct sequel to The Watchmaker of Filigree Street. So would people like to read this quite soon? like um people who've taken part in the watchmaker read along would you like to read the lost future of pepper harrow like in the next few months or next year how soon would people like to read the sequel because i would gladly do a read along of this but i could do it this time next year or i could do it in i don't know a couple of months um i'll put the poll on the goodreads group as well to see what people think but yeah i really want to reread this too probably also on audiobook and um, because it'll just be really nice to read it like yeah, after having reread Watchmaker, because I love them both very much, and I just, I love these characters so much, and it's so lovely to just, like, spend more time with them. Um, yeah, it's been such a joy to reread this one. I hope you've all enjoyed it too. Please do let me know your thoughts down in the comments. What do you make of all the characters? What do you make of the world? Um, how did you enjoy all the clockwork and memory? Like, there's so many interesting things happening in the Watchmaker of Filigree Street, and I just love it very, very much. So that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video. Oh,